by the birth of Our Lady yesterday, it was the start of the greatest victory ever had. It began there in that moment, that work of redemption for mankind, a victory over death, a victory over sin, a victory won by her son, Jesus Christ. And it was a victory, ultimately, that is shared by Mary, whom we aptly call the co-redemptrix. St. Louis de Montfort said that just as at the name of Jesus, every name must bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. The same is true of that name of Mary. And today, we celebrate that very name. Today is the solemnity of the holy name of Mary, which the feast day falls on the 12th of September. And it's a, a feast day that is important because it encourages us to constantly not only turn to Our Lady, but to invoke her by name, knowing that in that simple invocation is a great power which no man can measure for the good of souls. To better understand the importance of that feast of the Holy Name and the, and the, and the celebration of her Holy Name, we should find out where the feast originated from. In 1683, uh, one of the major goals at that time was for the Ottoman Empire. They had the goal of conquering all of Christendom. The Ottoman Empire is, uh, was centered in what today is known as Turkey, and they sought to destroy Christendom from, from one end to the other. And they put and to, and by doing so, put those under Muslim, those inhabitants there under Muslim rule and forced conversion of them to that false faith of Muhammad. And they devised a plan to implement all of this on their own. They, they put together and amassed a huge army of 300,000 soldiers and they set off to invade the Roman Empire. Their plan went like this, to go in from the south, from Turkey, march through the, the beginnings of the empire, conquering the, the villages that they came to, then ultimately end, ending up in Vienna, which was the capital of the Roman Empire, conquering that city, and then moving westward into Rome, and ultimately conquering Rome. The Sultan at that time of, of Turkey, he had said that he wanted to see St. Peter's Basilica reduced to dust on the ground. Well, as the summer began, they implemented this strategy. They started to march out from, uh, from Turkey, and they marched up in the, the 1683, and finally, um, with the, uh, the assistance of the traitor, uh, Thokoli, who was the uh, Calvinist ruler of Upper Hungary, they marched all the way across Transylvania and Lower Austria and came to Vienna. And upon that approach, as the army was coming, seeing that they were vastly outnumbered and they had nowhere near enough troops to be able to, to adequately defend themselves, the emperor actually fled to pass out uh, to, 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 to be safe there and sent out a um, message that they needed assistance from other uh, Catholic countries around them. There were only 15,000 troops left to guard the city of Vienna, and it was up to them to hold out as long as possible in order that they were hoping that reinforcements would come to their assistance and to aid them. Now, due to the fact that the city had a wall encompassing it, and that it was a fortified city, and a little bit of creativity in the way of defending that wall and, and, and defending themselves, they were, the Viennese soldiers did just that. They started to, to fight and to hold off and to have the stalemate arise there at the walls of the city that they knew could not last forever, but they hoped it would just last long enough for those for that aid to come. And at the same time, the personal chaplain to the emperor, whose name was uh, Father Marco Davi Daviano, he led all of the Viennese people each day 
in praying the rosary, praying for the assistance of Our Lady to come to their aid and to rescue their city. And with that, that confidence placed in the Queen of Heaven, their prayers ultimately were answered. And arriving in, that form, in the form of the answered prayer was a Polish king named Jan Sobrieski, who came down with uh, with his troops, bringing the total to about 70,000. And they marched from Krakow all the way to Vienna. And though those odds, 70,000 versus 300,000, were certainly tough and uh, exceed, to say the least, and th though the fact they had not near as many guns or not near as many pieces of artillery as the, the, the Turks had, Sobieski had on his side secret weapon to win that battle. Before he left Poland, he took all of his troops and he went and he consecrated them all to Our Lady of Częstochowa. And in doing so, they marched with full confidence down from, from Krakow to Vienna to fight courageously in this battle for Christ. And they arrived on the 12th of September, and uh, they immediately engaged with the enemy starting early in the morning, and by the end of the day it culminated in what was the largest cavalry charge ever known to mankind. 18,000 horsemen upon the side of the Christians came storming down the hill at the tour at the Turks and instead of sneaking up on them by surprise which they had the element of surprise because they came out of the woods in order to start that to charge they all screamed as loud as they could the battle cry for themselves which was the holy names of Jesus and Mary and in doing that they terrified the Turks and as they charged down they routed them and put them to flight. And they left Vienna and left all of their belongings in the tent and, and, and their tents and fled with haste out away from the city. After that victory, they continued to push them further and further until they sent them back to Turkey, reclaiming Hungary and Transylvania for, them, for themselves. And the great victory was won protecting the Roman Empire, Christendom, and, and all those inhabited inside it from those evil invaders. Vienna liberated, the Roman Empire saved, and Rome itself protected, all under the powerful in, uh, intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Because of this great victory, it was the Pope at that time, Innocent XI, to celebrate it he instituted this very feast, the Feast of the Holy Name of Mary, and he set it out to be celebrated all throughout the entire church um, to, be, to be commemorated each and every year. And, with, and for us, it serves, with, coupled with that story of where it came from, as that important reminder for all of us. With Our Lady, there's nothing that's impossible. With Our Lady, there's no battle that is ever truly lost. And just as it was true for Vienna, it is true every day in the spiritual battle that we wage for our own souls. St. Louis de Montfort said that God the Father gathered all the waters together and called them seas, Maria in Latin. Also, likewise, he gathered all his grace together and called it Mary, Maria, an immense treasury of grace. Our Lady is that storage of all grace and a treasury that we have ready access to at any point that we need it, day or night, no matter what the time, just call upon her and ask, and those graces come to us. And we need to turn to her, not just occasionally, but daily, in our times of need. Things bother us. Our souls are inclined towards evil. Our souls are inclined towards sin. Our souls are inclined to fall away from the things of God. Yet in Mary we find our strength necessary to persevere and strive forward and to grow. 
If we're tempted by the sins of the flesh, is she not known as Mary Most Pure? When we're plagued by doubts and despair, is she not Our Lady of Confidence? When anger and frustration hamper us, do we not call her Queen of Peace? When we're unsure of God's will in our life, she is the Mother of Good Counsel. If pride is what hampers us the most, she is, we find in her, the most humble servant and handmaid of the Lord. Every need that we have, Our Lady has an answer for. She is most importantly the Queen of Heaven. She is the Queen of Earth. And she is our loving Mother. And with that type of understanding, we turn to her. And we turn to her with full confidence. And we turn to her trusting in her rule over us and her love for us as a mother. We trust in the power of her intercession and the goodness in the care for souls that she has. Because by her name, there is no task that is impossible. There is no temptation too great to be overcome. There is no need, uh, spiritual or temporal, that is unattainable. And by the holy name of Mary, the devil and hell itself has no power and are forced to bow down. And they have no power whatsoever over us. Know that. Trust that. Have confidence in it. When we really believe that, when we really hold on to it, then we turn not in trepidation, but with full confidence and full readiness to Our Lady, knowing that it, just a simple word, just even the mention of her name, those graces of assistance are there for us to attain ourselves. And with that aid of grace, it ultimately will lead us in that final victory, the battle for our souls. May God bless you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.